General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon is a single-engine supersonic multi-role fighter aircraft originally developed by General Dynamics, now Lockheed Martin, for the United States Air Force, USAF. Designed as an air superiority day fighter, it evolved into a successful all-weather multi-role aircraft. Over 4,500 aircraft have been built since production was approved in 1976. Although no longer being purchased by the U.S. Air Force, improved versions are being built for export customers. In 1993, General Dynamics sold its aircraft manufacturing business to the Lockheed Corporation, which in turn became part of Lockheed Martin after a 1995 merger with Martin Marietta. The Fighting Falcon's key features include a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, side-mounted control stick to ease control while maneuvering, a seat reclined 30 degrees to reduce the effect of G-forces on the pilot, and the first use of the relaxed static stability slash fly-by-wire flight control system which helps to make it a nimble aircraft. The F-16 has an internal M61 Vulcan cannon and 11 locations for mounting weapons and other mission equipment. The F-16's official name is Fighting Falcon but Viper is commonly used by its pilots and crews, due to a perceived resemblance to a Viper snake as well as the colonial Viper starfighter on Battlestar Galactica which aired around when the F-16 entered service. In addition to active duty in the U.S. Air Force, Air Force Reserve Command, and Air National Guard units, the aircraft is also used by the USAF Aerial Demonstration Team, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, and as an adversary-slash-aggressor aircraft by the United States Navy. The F-16 has also been procured to serve in the air forces of 25 other nations. As of 2015, it is the world's most numerous fixed-wing aircraft in military service. Experiences in the Vietnam War revealed the need for air superiority fighters and better air-to-air training for fighter pilots. Based on his experiences in the Korean War and as a fighter tactics instructor in the early 1960s, Colonel John Boyd with mathematician Thomas Christie developed energy maneuverability theory to model a fighter aircraft's performance in combat. Boyd's work called for a small, lightweight aircraft that could maneuver with the minimum possible energy loss, and which also incorporated an increased thrust-to-weight ratio. In the late 1960s, Boyd gathered a group of like-minded innovators who became known as the Fighter Mafia, and in 1969, they secured Department of Defense funding for General Dynamics and Northrop to study design concepts based on the theory. Air Force FX proponents remained hostile to the concept because they perceived it as a threat to the F-15 program. However, the Air Force's leadership understood that its budget would not allow it to purchase enough F-15 aircraft to satisfy all of its missions. The advanced day fighter concept, renamed F-20 gained civilian political support under the reform-minded Deputy Secretary of Defense David Packard, who favored the idea of competitive prototyping. As a result, in May 1971, the Air Force Prototype Study Group was established, with Boyd a key member, and two of its six proposals would be funded, one being the lightweight fighter, LWF. The request for proposals issued on January 6, 1972 called for a class air-to-air day fighter with a good turn rate, acceleration, and range, and optimized for combat at speeds of Mach 0.6 to 1.6 and altitudes of. This was the region where USAF studies predicted most future air combat would occur. The anticipated average flyaway cost of a production version was $3 million. This production plan, though, was only notional, as the USAF had no firm plans to procure the winner. Five companies responded, and in 1972, the air staff selected General Dynamics Model 401 and Northrop's P-600 for the follow-on prototype development and testing phase. GD and Northrop were awarded contracts worth $37.9 million and $39.8 million to produce the YF-16 and YF-17, respectively, with first flights of both prototypes planned for early 1974. To overcome resistance in the Air Force hierarchy, the fighter mafia and other LWF proponents successfully advocated the idea of complementary fighters in a high-cost-slash-low-cost force mix. The high-slash-low mix would allow the USAF to be able to afford sufficient fighters for its overall fighter force structure requirements. The mix gained broad acceptance by the time of the prototype's fly-off, defining the relationship of the LWF and the F-15. The YF-16 was developed by a team of General Dynamics engineers led by Robert H. Widmer. 
The first Huayab 16 was rolled out on December 13, 1973. Its 90-minute maiden flight was made at the Air Force Flight Test Center, OFTC, at Edwards AFB, California, on February 2, 1974. Its actual first flight occurred accidentally during a high-speed taxi test on January 20, 1974. While gathering speed, a roll control oscillation caused a fin off port side wingtip mounted missile and then the starboard stabilator to scrape the ground, and the aircraft then began to veer off the runway. The test pilot, Phil Eastriker, decided to lift off to avoid a potential crash, safely landing six minutes later. The slight damage was quickly repaired and the official first flight occurred on time. The 16's first supersonic flight was accomplished on February 5, 1974 and the second YF-16 prototype first flew on 9 May 1974. This was followed by the first flights of Northrop's YF-17 prototypes on 9 June and August 21, 1974, respectively. During the fly-off, the 16s completed 330 sorties for a total of 417 flight hours, the 17s flew 288 sorties, covering 345 hours. Increased interest turned the LWF into a serious acquisition program. North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, allies Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Norway were seeking to replace their F-104G Starfighter fighter bombers. In early 1974, they reached an agreement with the U.S. that if the USAF ordered the LWF winner, they would consider ordering it as well. The USAF also needed to replace its F-105 Thunder Chief and F-4 Phantom II fighter bombers. The U.S. Congress sought greater commonality in fighter procurements by the Air Force and Navy, and in August 1974 redirected Navy funds to a new Navy Air Combat Fighter, NACF, program that would be a navalized fighter bomber variant of the LWF. The four NATO allies had formed the Multinational Fighter Program Group, MFPG and pressed for a U.S. decision by December 1974, thus, the USAF accelerated testing. To reflect this serious intent to procure a new fighter-bomber, the LWF program was rolled into a new air combat fighter, ACF, competition and an announcement by U.S. Secretary of Defense James R. Schlesinger in April 1974. The ACF would not be a pure fighter, but multi-role, and Schlesinger made it clear that any ACF order would be in addition to the F-15 which extinguished opposition to the LWF. ACF also raised the stakes for GD and Northrop because it brought in competitors intent on securing what was touted at the time as the arms deal of the century. These were Dassault Brigitte's proposed Mirage F1M53, the Anglo-French Seepcat Jaguar, and the proposed Saab 37E Eurofighter. Northrop offered the P530 Cobra, which was similar to the YF-17. The Jaguar and Cobra were dropped by the MFPG early on leaving two European and the two U.S. candidates. On September 11, 1974, the U.S. Air Force confirmed plans to order the winning ACF design to equip five tactical fighter wings. Though computer modeling predicted a close contest, the YF-16 proved significantly quicker going from one maneuver to the next, and was the unanimous choice of those pilots that flew both aircraft. On January 13, 1975, Secretary of the Air Force John L. McLucas announced the YF-16 as the winner of the ACF competition. The chief reasons given by the secretary were the 16's lower operating costs, greater range, and maneuver performance that was significantly better than that of the YF-17, especially at supersonic speeds. Another advantage of the YF-16, unlike the YF-17, was its use of the Pratt & Whitney F-100 turbofan engine, the same power plant used by the F-15. Such commonality would lower the cost of engines for both programs. Secretary McLucas announced that the USAF planned to order at least 650, possibly up to 1,400 production F 16s. In the Navy Air Combat Fighter NACF, competition, on May 2, 1975, the Navy selected the YF 17 as the basis for what would become the McDonnell Douglas F A 18 Hornet. The U.S. Air Force initially ordered 15 full scale development. FSD, aircraft, 11 single-seat and 4 two-seat models, for its flight test program, but was reduced to 8, 6 F-16A single-seaters and 2 F-16B two-seaters. The YF-16 design was altered for the production F-16. The fuselage was lengthened by, a larger nose radome was fitted for the N-APG-66 radar, wing area was increased from 2, the tail fin height was decreased, the ventral fins were enlarged, two more stores stations were added 
and a single door replaced the original nose wheel double doors. The F-16's weight was increased by 25% over the YF-16 by these modifications. The FSD F-16s were manufactured by General Dynamics in Fort Worth, Texas at United States Air Force Plant 4 in late 1975. The first F-16A rolled out on 20 October 1976 and first flew on 8 of December. The initial two-seat model achieved its first flight on August 8, 1977. The initial production standard F-16A flew for the first time on August 7, 1978 and its delivery was accepted by the USAF on January 6, 1979. The F-16 was given its formal nickname of Fighting Falcon on 21 July 1980, entering USAF operational service with the 34th Tactical Fighter Squadron. 388th Tactical Fighter Wing at Hill AFB in Utah on October 1, 1980. On June 7, 1975, the four European partners, now known as the European Participation Group, signed up for 348 aircraft at the Paris Air Show. This was split among the European Participation Air Forces, EPAF, as 116 for Belgium, 58 for Denmark, 102 for the Netherlands and 72 for Norway. Two European production lines, one in the Netherlands at Fokker's Skiplos facility and the other at Saab Kuzgosli's plant in Belgium, would produce 184 and 164 units respectively. Norway's Kongsberg Vapenfabrik and Denmark's Terma AS also manufactured parts and subassemblies for BOF aircraft. European co-production was officially launched on July 1, 1977 at the Fokker factory. Beginning in November 1977, Fokker produced components where he sent to Fort Worth for fuselage assembly, then shipped back to Europe for final assembly of EPF aircraft at the Belgian plant on February 15, 1978, delivery as to the Belgian Air Force began in January 1979. The first Royal Netherlands Air Force aircraft was delivered in June 1979. In 1980, the first aircraft were delivered to the Royal Norwegian Air Force by Sabka and to the Royal Danish Air Force by Fokker. During the late 1980s and 1990s, Turkish Aerospace Industries, TAI, produced 232 Block 30 40 50 F 16s on a production line in Ankara under license for the Turkish Air Force. TAI also produced 46 Block 40s for Egypt in the mid 1990s and 30s Block 50 from 2010. Korean Aerospace Industries opened a production line for the KF 16 program producing 140 Block 52s from the mid-1990s to mid-2000s, decade. If India had selected the F-16 inches for its medium multi-role combat aircraft procurement, a sixth F-16 production line would have been built in India. In May 2013, Lockheed Martin stated there were currently enough orders to keep producing the F-16 until 2017. One change made during production was augmented pitch control to avoid deep stall conditions at high angles of attack. The stall issue had been raised during development, but had originally been discounted. Model tests of the YF-16 conducted by the Langley Research Center revealed a potential problem, but no other laboratory was able to duplicate it. YF-16 flight tests were not sufficient to expose the issue. Later flight testing on the FSD aircraft demonstrated there was a real concern. In response, the areas of the horizontal stabilizer were increased 25% on the Block 15 aircraft in 1981 and later retrofitted to earlier aircraft. In addition, a manual override switch to disable the horizontal stabilizer flight limiter was prominently placed on the control console, allowing the pilot to regain control of the horizontal stabilizers, which the flight limiters otherwise lock in place, and recover. Besides reducing the risk of deep stalls, the larger horizontal tail also improved stability and permitted faster takeoff rotation. In the 1980s, the Multinational Staged Improvement Program, MSIP, was conducted to evolve the F-16's capabilities, mitigate risks during technology development, and ensure the aircraft's worth. The program upgraded the F-16 in three stages. The MSIP process permitted the quick introduction of new capabilities at lower costs and with reduced risks compared to traditional independent upgrade programs. In 2012, the USAF had allocated $2.8 billion to upgrade 350 F-16s while waiting for the F-35 to enter service. One key upgrade has been an auto GCS, ground collision avoidance system, to reduce instances of controlled flight into terrain. Onboard power and cooling capacities limit the scope of upgrades, which often involve the addition of more power-hungry avionics. Lockheed won many contracts to upgrade foreign operators F-16s. 
BAE Systems also offers various F-16 upgrades, receiving orders from South Korea, Oman, Turkey, and the U.S. Air National Guard. BAE lost the South Korean contract due to a price breach in November 2014. In 2012, the USAF assigned the total upgrade contract to Lockheed Martin. Upgrades include Raytheon's center display unit, which replaces several analogy flight instruments with a single digital display. In 2013, sequestration budget cuts cast doubt on the USAF's ability to complete the Combat Avionics Programmed Extension Suite, CAPES, a part of secondary programs such as Taiwan's F-16 upgrade. ACC's General Mike Hostage stated that if he only had money for SLEP, Service Life Extension Program or CAPES, he would fund SLEP to keep the aircraft flying. Lockheed Martin responded to talk of CAPES cancellation with a fixed-price upgrade package for foreign users. CAPES was not included in the Pentagon's 2015 budget request. The USAF said that the upgrade package will still be offered to the Republic of China Air Force, and Lockheed said that some common elements with the F-35 will keep the radar's unit costs down. In 2014, the USAF issued a RFI to slot 300 F-16C-Ds. To make more room for assembly of its newer F-35 Lightning II fighter, Lockheed Martin is moving F-16 production from Fort Worth, Texas to its plant in Greenville, South Carolina. Lockheed delivered the last F-16 from Fort Worth to the Iraqi Air Force on November 14, 2017, ending 40 years of F-16 production there. It is hoping to finish the Greenville move and restart production within two years, in 2019, though engineering and modernization work will remain in Fort Worth. A gap in orders made it possible to stop production during the move. After completing orders for the last Iraqi purchase, the company was negotiating an F-16 sale to Bahrain that would be produced in Greenville. This contract was signed in June 2018. The F-16 is a single-engine, highly maneuverable, supersonic, multi-role tactical fighter aircraft. It is much smaller and lighter than predecessors, but uses advanced aerodynamics and avionics, including the first use of a relaxed static stability slash fly-by-wire. RSS-FBW, flight control system, to achieve enhanced maneuver performance. Highly nimble, the F-16 was the first fighter aircraft purpose-built to pull 9G maneuvers and can reach a maximum speed of over Mach 2. Innovations include a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, side-mounted control stick, and reclined seat to reduce G-force effects in the pilot. It is armed with an internal M61 Vulcan cannon in the left wing route and has multiple locations for mounting various missiles, bombs and pods. It has a thrust to weight ratio greater than 1, providing power to climb and accelerate vertically. The F-16 was designed to be relatively inexpensive to build and simpler to maintain than earlier generation fighters. The airframe is built with about 80% aviation grade aluminum alloys, 8% steel, 3% composites, and 1.5% titanium. The leading edge flaps, stabilators, and ventral fins make use of bonded aluminum honeycomb structures and graphite epoxy lamination coatings. The number of lubrication points, fuel line connections, and replaceable modules is significantly lower than predecessors. 80% of access panels can be accessed without stands. The air intake was placed so it was rearward of the nose but forward enough to minimize airflow losses and reduce aerodynamic drag. Although the LWF program called for a structural life of 4,000 flight hours, capable of achieving 7.33 G with 80% internal fuel, GD's engineers decided to design the F-16's airframe life for 8,000 hours and for 9G maneuvers on full internal fuel. This proved advantageous when the aircraft's mission changed from solely air to air combat to multi-role operations. Changes in operational use and additional systems have increased weight necessitating multiple structural strengthening programs. The F-16 has a crop delta wing incorporating wing fuselage blending and four body vortex control strakes, a fixed geometry, underslung air intake, with splitter plate, to the single turbofan jet engine, a conventional triplane empennage arrangement with all moving horizontal stabilator tailplanes, a pair of ventral fins beneath the fuselage after the wing's trailing edge, and a tricycle landing gear configuration with the aft retracting. Steerable nose gear deploying a short distance behind the inlet lip. There is a boom style aerial refueling receptacle located behind the single piece bubble canopy of the cockpit. Split flap speed brakes are located at the aft end of the wing body fairing, and a tail hook is mounted underneath the fuselage. A fairing beneath the rudder often houses ECM equipment or a drag chute. 
Later F-16 models feature a long dorsal fairing along the fuselage's spine, housing additional equipment or fuel. Aerodynamic studies in the 1960s demonstrated that the vortex lift phenomenon could be harnessed by highly swept wing configurations to reach higher angles of attack, using leading-edge vortex flow off a slender lifting surface. As the F-16 was being optimized for high combat agility, GD's designers chose a slender crop delta wing with a leading edge sweep of 40 degrees and a straight trailing edge. To improve maneuverability, a variable camber wing with a NACA 64A204 airfoil was selected. The camber is adjusted by leading edge and trailing edge flaperones linked to a digital flight control system, FCS, regulating theft flight envelope. The F-16 has a moderate wing loading, reduced by fuselage lift. The vortex lift effect is increased by leading edge extensions, known as strakes. Strakes act as additional short span, triangular wings running from the wing root, the juncture with the fuselage, to a point further forward in the fuselage. Blended into the fuselage and along the wing root, the strake generates a high-speed vortex that remains attached to the top of the wing as angle of attack increases, generating additional lift and allowing greater angles of attack without stalling. Strakes allow a smaller lower aspect ratio wing, which increases roll rates and directional stability while decreasing weight. Deeper wing roots also increase structural strength and internal fuel volume. Early F-16s could be armed with up to six AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking short-range air-to-air missiles, AAM, by employing rail launchers on each wingtip, as well as radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrow medium-range arms in a weapons mix. More recent versions support the AIM 120M ROM. The aircraft can carry various other ROMs, a wide variety of air to ground missiles, rockets or bombs, electronic countermeasures, ECM, navigation, targeting or weapons pods, and fuel tanks on nine hardpoints, six under the wings, two on wingtips, and one under the fuselage. Two other locations under the fuselage are available for sensor or radar pods. The F 16 carries a 20 mm. 0.787 in M61A1 Vulcan cannon for close-range aerial combat and strafing. The 20 mm cannon is mounted inside the fuselage to the left of the cockpit. The F-16 was the first production fighter aircraft intentionally designed to be slightly aerodynamically unstable, also known as relaxed static stability (RSS) to improve maneuverability. Most aircraft are designed with positive static stability which induces aircraft to return to straight and level flight attitude if the pilot releases the controls. This reduces maneuverability as the inherent stability has to be overcome. Aircraft with negative stability are designed to deviate from controlled flight and thus be more maneuverable. At supersonic speeds the F-16 gains stability, eventually positive, due to aerodynamic changes. To counter the tendency to depart from controlled flight, and avoid the need for constant trim inputs by the pilot, the F-16 has a quadruplex, four-channel fly-by-wire, FBW, flight control system, FLCS. The flight control computer, FLCC, accepts pilot input from the stick and rudder controls, and manipulates the control surfaces in such a way as to produce the desired result without inducing control loss. The FLCC conducts thousands of measurements per second on the aircraft's flight attitude to automatically counter deviations from the pilot's set flight path leading to a common aphorism among pilots, you don't fly an F-16, it flies you. The FLCC further incorporates limiters governing movement in the three main axes based on attitude, airspeed and angle of attack, AOA. These prevent control surfaces from inducing instability such as slips or skids, or a high OA inducing a stall. The limiters also prevent maneuvers that would exert more than a 9G load. Flight testing has revealed that assaulting multiple limiters at high O and low speed can result in an OFR exceeding the 25 degrees limit, colloquially referred to as departing, this causes a deep stall, a near free fall at 50 degrees to 60 degrees OA, either upright or inverted. While at a very high OA, the aircraft's attitude is stable but control surfaces are ineffective, the pitch limiter locks the stabilators at an extreme pitch up or pitch down attempting to recover. This can be overridden so the pilot can rock the nose via pitch control to recover. Unlike the YF-17, which had hydromechanical control serving as a backup to the FBW, General Dynamics took the innovative step of eliminating mechanical linkages between the control stick and rudder pedals, and the flight control surfaces. The F-16 is entirely reliant on its electrical systems to relay flight commands, instead of traditional mechanically linked controls, leading to the early moniker of the electric jet. 
The quadruplex design permits graceful degradation in flight control response and that the loss of one channel renders the FLCS a triplex system. The FLCC began as an analog system on the AB variants, but has been supplanted by a digital computer system beginning with the F16C slash D Block 40. The F-16's controls suffered from a sensitivity to static electricity or electrostatic discharge, ESD. Up to 70 to 80 percent of the CD model's electronics were vulnerable to ESD. A key feature of the F-16's cockpit is the exceptional field of view. The single-piece, bird-proof polycarbonate bubble canopy provides 360 degrees all-round visibility, with a 40 degrees look-down angle over the side of the aircraft and 15 degrees down over the nose, compared to the common 12 to 13 degrees of preceding aircraft, the pilot's seat is elevated for this purpose. Furthermore, the F-16's canopy lacks the forward bow frame found on many fighters, which is an obstruction to a pilot's forward vision. The F-16's ACES 20-0 ejection seat is reclined at an unusual tilt-back angle of 30 degrees. Most fighters have a tilted seat at 13 to 15 degrees. The tilted seat can accommodate taller pilots and increases G-force tolerance. However, it has been associated with reports of neck ache, possibly caused by incorrect headrest usage. Subsequent U.S. fighters have adopted more modest tilt-back angles of 20 degrees. Due to the seat angle and the canopy's thickness, the ejection seat lacks canopy breakers for emergency egress. Instead, the entire canopy is jettisoned prior to the seat's rocket firing. The pilot flies primarily by means of an armrest-mounted side stick controller instead of a traditional center-mounted stick and an engine throttle. Conventional rudder pedals are also employed. To enhance the pilot's degree of control of the aircraft during high-G combat maneuvers, various switches and function controls were moved to centralized hands on throttle and stick, HOTUS, controls upon both the controllers and the throttle. Hand pressure on the side stick controller is transmitted by electrical signals via the FBW system to adjust various flight control surfaces to maneuver the F-16. Originally the side stick controller was non-moving, but this proved uncomfortable and difficult for pilots to adjust to sometimes resulting in a tendency to over-rotate during takeoffs, so the control stick was given a small amount of play. Since introduction on the F-16, HOTA's controls have become a standard feature on modern fighters. The F-16 has a head-up display, HUD, which projects visual flight and combat information in front of the pilot without obstructing the view, being able to keep their head out of the cockpit improves the pilot's situation awareness. Further flight and systems information are displayed on multifunction displays, MFD. The left-hand MFD is the primary flight display, PFD, typically showing radar and moving maps. The right-hand MFD is the system display, SD, presenting information about the engine, landing gear, slat and flap settings, and fuel and weapon status. Initially, the F-16A-B had monochrome cathode ray tube, CRT, displays, replaced by color liquid crystal displays on the Block 5052. The MLU introduced compatibility with night vision goggles, NVG. The Boeing Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System, JHMCS, is available from Block 40 onwards, for targeting based on where the pilot's head faces, unrestricted by the HUD, using high off foresight missiles like the AIM-9X. The F-16A-B was originally equipped with the Westinghouse and slash APG-66 fire control radar. Its slotted planar array antenna was designed to be compact to fit into the F-16's relatively small nose. In uplook mode, the APG-66 uses a low pulse repetition frequency, PRF, for medium and high altitude target detection in a low clutter environment, and in look down slash shoot down employs a medium PRF for heavy clutter environments. It has four operating frequencies within the X band, and provides four air to air and seven air to ground operating modes for combat, even at night or in bad weather. The Block 15's APG 66 V2 model added a more powerful signal processing, higher output power, improved reliability, and increased range in cluttered or jamming environments. The Midlife Update, MLU, program introduced a new model, APG-66 V2A, which features higher speed and more memory. The in apg 68 an evolution of the APG-66, was introduced with the F-16C D Block 25. The APG-68 has greater range and resolution, as well as 25 operating modes, including ground mapping, Doppler beam sharpening, ground moving target indication, C-target, and track while scan, TWS, 
for up to 10 targets. The Block 40 42 SAPG 68 V1 model added full compatibility with Lockheed Martin low altitude navigation and targeting infrared for night, Lantiran, pods, and a high PRF pulse Doppler track mode to provide continuous wave radar, CW, target illumination for semi active radar homing, SARH, missiles like the IM 7 Sparrow. Block 5052 F-16s initially used the more reliable APG-68 V5 which has a programmable signal processor employing very high-speed integrated circuit, MSIC, technology. The advanced Block 5052, or 50 plus slash 52 plus, are equipped with the APG-68 V9 radar, with a 30% greater air-to-air -air detection range on the synthetic aperture radar, SAR, mode for high-resolution mapping and target detection recognition. In August 2004, Northrop Grumman were contracted to upgrade the APG-68 radars at Block 40-40-50-52 aircraft to the V-10 standard, providing all-weather autonomous detection and targeting for global positioning system, GPS-aided precision weapons, SAR mapping and terrain following radar, TF, modes, as well as interleaving of all modes. The F-16E slash F is outfitted with Northrop Grumman's and slash APG-80 active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar. Northrop Grumman developed the latest ESA radar upgrade for the F-16, selected for USAF and Republic of China Air Force F-16 upgrades, named the Scalable Agile Beam Radar, SABR. In July 2007, Raytheon announced that it was developing a next-generation radar, Ranger based on its earlier in slash APG-79 as a radar as a competitor to Northrop Grumman's and slash APG-68 and in slash APG-80 for the F-16. The initial power plant selected for the single-engine F-16 was the Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW200 afterburning turbofan, a modified version of the F-15's F-100 PW100, rated at 23,830 pounds, 106.0 kN, thrust. During testing, the engine was found to be prone to compressor stalls and rollbacks, wherein the engine's thrust would spontaneously reduce to idle. Until resolved, the Air Force ordered F 16s to be operated within dead stick landing distance of its bases. It was the standard F 16 engine through the Block 25, except for new build Block 15s with the operational capability upgrade, OCU. The OCU introduced the 23,770 pounds, 105.7 kilonewtons. F-100 PW-220, later installed on Block 32 and 42 aircraft, the main advance being a digital electronic engine controlled EEC unit, which improved reliability and reduced stall occurrence. Beginning production in 1988, the-220 also supplanted the F-15's-100, for commonality. Many of the minus 220 engines on Block 25 and later aircraft were upgraded from 1997 onwards to the 220E standard, which enhanced reliability and maintainability. Unscheduled engine removals were reduced by 35%. The F 100 PW 220 220E was the result of the USAF's Alternate Fighter Engine AFE, program, colloquially known as the Great Engine War which also saw the entry of General Electric as an F-16 engine provider. Its F-110 GE-100 turbofan was limited by the original inlet to thrust of 25,735 pounds, 114.5 kilonewtons. The modular common inlet duct allowed the F-110 to achieve its maximum thrust of 28,984 pounds, 128.9 kilonewtons. To distinguish between aircraft equipped with these two engines and inlets, from the Block 30 series on, Block Sending and Zero, for example, Block 30, are powered by GE, and Block Sending and Two, for example, Block 32, are fitted with Pratt & Whitney engines. The Increased Performance Engine, IPE, program led to the 29,588 pounds, 131.6 kilonewtons, F110 GE129 on the Block 50 and 29,160 pounds, 129.4 kilonewtons, F100 PW229 on the Block 52. F16s began flying with these EP engines in the early 1990s. Altogether, of the 1,446 F16C/Ds ordered by the USAF, 556 were fitted with F100 series engines and 890 with F110S.
The United Arab Emirates Block 60 is powered by the General Electric F110 GE132 turbofan with a maximum thrust of 32,500 pounds, 144.6 kilonewtons, the highest thrust engine developed for the F16. F-16s have participated in numerous conflicts, most of them in the Middle East. The F-16 is being used by the active duty USAF, Air Force Reserve, and Air National Guard units, the USAF Aerial Demonstration Team, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, and is an adversary aggressor aircraft by the United States Navy at the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center. The U.S. Air Force, including the Air Force Reserve and the Air National Guard, flew the F-16 in combat during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and in the Balkan Slater in the 1990s. F-16s also patrolled the no-fly zones in Iraq during Operations Northern Watch and Southern Watch and served during the wars in Afghanistan Operation Enduring Freedom, and Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, from 2001 and 2003 respectively. In 2011, Air Force F-16s took part in the intervention in Libya. The F-16 had been scheduled to remain in service with the U.S. Air Force until 2025. Its replacement was planned to be the F-35A variant of the Lockheed Martin 35 Lightning II, which is expected gradually begin replacing several multi-role aircraft among the program's member nations. However, due to delays in the F-35 program, all USAF F-16s will receive service life extension upgrades. The F-16's first air-to-air -air combat success was achieved by the Israeli Air Force, IAF, over the Bekaa Valley on April 28, 1981, against a Syrian Mi-8 helicopter, which was downed with cannon fire. On June 7, 1981, eight Israeli F-16s, escorted by six F-15s, executed Operation Opera, their first employment in a significant air-to-ground operation. This raid severely damaged Osirak, an Iraqi nuclear reactor under construction near Baghdad, to prevent the regime of Saddam Hussein from using the reactor for the creation of nuclear weapons. The following year, during the 1982 Lebanon War Israeli F-16s engaged Syrian aircraft in one of the largest air battles involving jet aircraft, which began on 9 June and continued for two more days. Israeli Air Force F-16s were credited with 44 air-to-air -air kills during the conflict. In January 2000, Israel completed a purchase of 102 new F-16A aircraft and a deal totaling $4.5 billion. F-16s were also used in their ground attack role for strikes against targets in Lebanon. IFF-16s participated in the 2006 Lebanon War and the 2008-09 Gaza War. During and after the 2006 Lebanon War, IFF-16s shot down Iranian Mawavs launched by Hezbollah using Rafael Python 5 air-to-air -air missiles. On February 10, 2018, an Israeli Air Force F-16I was shot down in northern Israel when it was hit by a relatively old model S-200, NATO name SA-5 Gammon surface-to-air missile of the Syrian Air Defense Force. The pilot and navigator ejected safely in Israeli territory. The F-16I was part of a bombing mission against Syrian and Iranian targets around Damascus after an Iranian drone entered Israeli airspace and was shot down. An Israel Air Force investigation determined in February 27, 2018 that the loss was due to pilot error since the IF determined the aircrew did not adequately defend themselves. During the Soviet-Afghan War between May 1986 and January 1989, Pakistan Air Force F-16 shot down at least eight intruders from Afghanistan. The first three of these, two Afghan Su-22s and one in 26, were shot down by two pilots. Pakistani pilots also downed five other intruders, two Su-22s, two MiG-23s, and one Su-25. Most of these kills were by AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, but at least one. A Su-22 was destroyed by cannon fire. Flight Lieutenant Khalid Mahmoud is credited with three of these kills. One F-16 was lost in these battles during an encounter between two F-16s and four Soviet Air Force MiG-23s on April 29, 1987. The pilot ejected safely. The damned F-16 was likely hit accidentally by a sidewinder fired from another F-16. On June 7, 2002, a Pakistan Air Force F-16 shot down an Indian unmanned aerial vehicle the Israeli-made Searcher II, near Lahore. The Pakistan Air Force has used its F-16s in various foreign and internal military exercises, such as the Indus Vipers exercise in 2008 conducted jointly with Turkey. Since May 2009, 
The PF has also been using their F-16 fleet to attack militant positions and support the Pakistan Army's operations in northwest Pakistan against the Taliban insurgency. As of November 2011, FF-16 have launched 5,500 sorties in operations. More than 80% of the dropped munitions were aerial laser-guided bombs. FF-16s patrolled the Indian border during the Kargil conflict and during the 2008 tension with India. The Turkish Air Force acquired its first F-16s in 1987. Turkish F-16s participated in the Bosnia Herzegovina and Kosovo since 1993 in support of United Nations resolutions. On June 18, 1992, a Greek Mirage F-1 crashed during a dogfight with a Turkish F-16. On February 8, 1995, a Turkish F-16 crashed into the Aegean after being intercepted by Greek Mirage F-1 fighters. On October 8, 1996, seven months after the escalation over EMEA Greek Mirage 2000 reportedly fired an R.550 Magic 2 missile and shot down a Turkish F-16D over the Aegean Sea. The Turkish pilot died, while the co-pilot ejected and was rescued by Greek forces. In August 2012, after the downing of an RF-4E on the Syrian coast, Turkish Defense Minister Ismet Imaz confirmed that the Turkish F-16D was shot down by a Greek Mirage 2000 with an R.550 Magic 2 in 1996 after violating Greek airspace near Chios Island. Greece denies that the F-16 was shot down. Both Mirage 2000 pilots reported that the F-16 caught fire and they saw one parachute. On May 23, 2006, Two Greek F-16s intercepted a Turkish RF-4 reconnaissance aircraft and two F-16 escorts off the coast of the Greek island of Kerpathos, within the Athens Fir. A mock dogfight ensued between the two sides, resulting in a mid-air collision between a Turkish F-16 and a Greek F-16. The Turkish pilot ejected safely, but the Greek pilot died due to damage caused by the collision. Five days before the incident, a Turkish F-16 pilot was doing dangerous maneuvers, while being intercepted by Greek F-16 fighters, attempting to hit a Greek fighter. Turkey used its F-16s extensively in its conflict with separatist Kurds in Kurdish parts of Turkey and Iraq. Turkey launched its first cross-border raid on 16 December 2007, a prelude to the 2008 Turkish incursion into northern Iraq, involving 50 fighters before Operation Sun. This was the first time Turkey had mounted a night bombing operation on a massive scale, and also the largest operation conducted by Turkish Air Force. During the Syrian civil war, Turkish F-16s were tasked with airspace protection on the Syrian border. After the RF-4 downing in June 2012 Turkey changed at its rules of engagements against Syrian aircraft, resulting in scrambles and downings of Syrian combat aircraft. On September 16, 2013, a Turkish Air Force F-16 shot down a Syrian Arab Air Force Mil Mi-17 helicopter in Latakia province near the Turkish border. On March 23, 2014, a Turkish Air Force F-16 shot down a Syrian Arab Air Force Mi Kayan Gurevich MiG-23 when it allegedly entered Turkish airspace during a ground attack mission against Al-Qaeda-linked insurgents. On May 16, 2015, Two Turkish Air Force F-16s shot down a Syrian Mohajer 4 UAV firing two AIM-9 missiles after it trespassed into Turkish airspace for five minutes. A Turkish Air Force F-16 shot down a Russian Air Force Sukhoi Su-24 on the Turkey-Syria border on November 24, 2015. On February 16, 2015, Egyptian F-16s struck jihadi weapons caches and training camps in Libya in revenge of the murder of 21 workers by masked militants affiliated with the Islamic State, ISIS. The airstrikes killed 64 ISIS fighters, including three leaders in Derna and Sirt on the coast. The Royal Netherlands Air Force, Belgian Air Force, Royal Danish Air Force, Royal Norwegian Air Force, Pakistan Air Force, and Venezuela Air Force have flown F-16 on combat missions. A Yugoslavian MiG-29 was shot down by a Dutch F-16 M during the Kosovo War in 1999. Belgian and Danish F-16s also participated in joint operations over Kosovo during the war. Dutch, Belgian, Danish, and Norwegian F-16s were deployed during the 2011 intervention in Libya and in Afghanistan. In Libya, Norwegian F-16s dropped almost 550 bombs and flew 596 missions. Some 17% of the total strike missions including the bombing of Moammar Kadafi's headquarters. In late March 2018, Croatia announced its intention to purchase 12 used Israeli F-16C-D Barak, Brigitte jets, pending U.S. approval. 
Acquiring these F-16s would allow Croatia to retire its aging MiG-21s. In July 2018, Slovakia's government approved the purchase 14 F-16s Block 7072 to replace an aging fleet of Soviet-made MiG-29s. F-16 models are denoted by increasing block numbers to denote upgrades. The blocks cover both single and two-seat versions. A variety of software, hardware, systems, weapons compatibility, and structural enhancements have been instituted over the years to gradually upgrade production models and retrofit delivered aircraft. While many F-16s were produced according to these block designs, there have been many other variants with significant changes, usually due to modification programs. Other changes have resulted in role specialization, such as the close air support and reconnaissance variants. Several models were also developed to test new technology. The F-16 design also inspired the design of other aircraft, which are considered derivatives. Older F-16s are being converted into QF-16 drone targets. By July 2010 there had been 4,500 F-16s delivered. The F-16 has been involved in over 650 hull loss accidents as of June 2016. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.